Hi there, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane. Please let me know you're here by leaving a comment down below, just like these fine human beings did in the last one. And remember to let me know which house you're in if you've joined us on Discord. In the last class, we made it so that when a new ball is spawned, it will follow the paddle until it is shot into the level. And now in this class, what we're going to be doing is making it so that we can shoot the ball off into the level. So, without any further messing about, let's get stuck in. Now that we've got the ball following the paddle at the beginning of the game, what we need to do now is get, get it so that the player can shoot the ball into the game themselves. So previously we had it that the ball would just fly off into the level at the beginning of the game. We don't want that. We want to give that ability to the player. So let's get that set up, shall we? So the first place I want to go is into the ball blueprint. So let's get that bad boy open. Here it is. And I want to update this launch ball event. So if you remember, we set um, an active property, an active variable on the ball. And we need to know at times whether or not this is active or not. When the ball is launched into the level, that means the ball is active and that's going to stop us being able to spawn a new ball. So just into this launch ball event, what I need to do, and just move this along here, is out of launch ball, we're going to set set active and we're going to set that to true. And then we'll know that the ball is in play. So we'll compile that. And while I'm in this blueprint, I also want to, we set this up here, which is to get the player controller. So I'm just going to comment this as well. Get player controller. Or just get player will be fine, actually. That's so just so I know that I'm casting to it there. If I ever forget, which is likely. And we no longer need the launch ball here. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. And that, because we're going to handle that elsewhere. So we'll just now move these over here just to keep things lined up a little bit. Okay, so I'm done in this blueprint. Let's compile that. I'll save it as well. And then what I want to do now is go into the player paddle blueprint. And this is where we're going to set up the, the ball launching. So we need this action to be triggered by an event, which is going to be when the player presses the fire key. So if we go to the project settings, hopefully you'll remember that we set up an input right at the beginning for fire, that's what it's called, and W, up, or spacebar will cause the ball to be fired. So we can now go into our player paddle, right click, and if we just type fire, because that's what we called it, we get an event for that. Beautiful. So this is gonna happen when we press that key, or one of those three keys. So what we need to do, first of all, is get some information about the ball. And we've got a ball variable here, which if you remember, when we spawn the actor, the ball, we set that into a variable. So every new ball that comes in that's spawned, what we can do is then mess about with it. So we're going to get the ball and we need to know a few bits about it. First of all, we need to know, is it valid? So we're going to do is valid and we're going to use the one with the F next to it. There we go. And what that tells us is whether or not the ball exists. So if the ball doesn't exist, if it's not spawned for some reason, then we can't launch it. So that's one thing that we need to know. Did the ball spawn properly? Is it actually there? We also need to know is it active? So we're going to get active because if it's been launched into the game and it is active, we don't want this to work. So only if it's not active. So moving forward from here then, this actually needs to have a not coming out of it, a not boolean. Because we're only going to work with this if active is not true. So there's the not there. And we need both of these, so not active and is it valid? If both of those are true, we can move on. So we're going to add an and boolean to get those two to work together. So we'll plug those in. So there you go. If the ball is valid and if it's not active, we can move on. What we've set up here is a condition. So we're going to just come out of here and we're going to do a branch. There we go. So when we press fire, the first thing we're going to do is ask these questions. This, this is the condition before we can move any further. So is it valid and is it not active? And if that is true, we can move forward. And so what I'm going to do, I could just use this ball reference here, but that's going to get a bit messy. So I'm going to get a new reference just to bring it a bit closer. Get ball. And then out of here, I'm going to go launch. And that relates to the custom event launch ball that we have in here. This one there, it's going to add the impulse to it and set the ball to active. And that's going to happen on true. 
So what we're saying is, we press fire, ask these questions, if it comes back true, perform launch ball on the ball. So we can now compile that. And now would be a good time to test whether or not this is working. So let's go here, we'll press play. I'll click here to make it active. So I can still move left and right, which is a good sign. The ball at this stage is still following the paddle. And if I press, I'm gonna press up on my keyboard and it fires. So we've managed to get that functionality working perfectly. So now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna let the ball go and this creates a problem because there's nothing killing that ball when it falls out of the play area. So we can't use anything to trigger the spawning of a new ball to keep the game rolling. So moving forward in the next step, what we need to do is get that functionality in place. So what we're gonna do first of all is put a kill zone in something to kill the ball when it goes out of the, the play space. But just to tidy things up before we move on, let's comment this. So put it all in there, press C, and I'm gonna call this launch fireball, I think, fireball. There we go, that's lovely. And we'll line that up. Okay, so that's that step finished. I will see you in the next step where we will be able to kill some balls. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody. And for that reason, all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free. And we're supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy governor and support our work, as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction, then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.